everyone, I hope you're well. I'm going to give you some book reviews. So these book reviews are going to be the books that I read at the end of December and the first half of January. I have four books. Two of the books were my December book club picks, which I'm going to do at the end of the video. And all my reviews going forward on this channel now are going to be spoiler free. So I'm just going to get straight into it. First up, I read Strange Weather in Tokyo. This is by Hiromi Karakami. It was originally published in Japan in Japanese in 2001. It was then published in English in 2012. And if you live in America, it's not called Strange Weather in Tokyo. It is either called the briefcase or the teacher's briefcase. The English translator is Alison Markson Powell. This book is about loneliness really. It's about a woman who she's in her 40s and she goes to a bar and sitting at the bar next to her is her old high school teacher. The woman is in her 40s, the man is kind of in his late 60s, 70s and they form a friendship together. They're both very lonely people and they start meeting at the bar and having conversations with each other. They then start meeting outside of the bar and going on these kind of little trips together and it's about looking back on your life with regret you don't find out why these people are lonely till way at the end of the book and the book really subtly unravels itself it's like little crumbs it gives you of information and you have to piece them all together to work out what is the history of these two people what went wrong in their lives they're looking back thinking if I would have stayed with this person or if I hadn't have been with this person would my life have been different but it's not my life is just what it is now there's also the passing of time because he's older than her and she really gets very connected to him but she knows that he is older than her and he is aware of that that he's not going to be around forever and she's going to be left lonely by herself again but it's not a love story that's what I'm going to say about this I absolutely adored this. I loved how subtle it was. I loved how we didn't find out anything really to do with the characters till really far in the book. There's a lot to do with Japanese food. I felt like the descriptions of everything was so beautiful. The descriptions of Japanese landscapes and the food. You felt like you were on the little trips with them. I thought it was great. I loved the enthusiasm of food as well because they're both love food and so he's sharing his enthusiasm with her and she's sharing it with him I loved it I thought it was so heartbreaking at the same time really sad really heartbreaking but lovely it was also incredibly funny let me say that so much humor within this book I loved it I cannot recommend this book enough I thought it was so beautiful I highly recommend you reading it the next book I read was Convenience Store Woman and this is by Sayaka Murata. This was originally published in Japanese in 2016 and then it was translated into English in 2018. This is about a woman who, she's 36 years old, she's never had a boyfriend and she's worked at the same convenience store for 18 years. Now a little fun fact, the author actually has spent 18 years working part time in convenience stores before this book was successful. So she always wanted to be an author, but she couldn't financially afford to be. So before this book became a huge success, she herself worked part-time at convenience stores. So I just thought that was like a little interesting fact. So this is about a woman who her sister is really worried about her. Her sister wants to get what's considered like a proper job and her friends are really worried about her. They don't understand why she doesn't want to be romantic with someone. Why wouldn't she want to get married and have children? They can't quite work her out. I would say this book is about someone who has tried to be normal you could say and fit into the real world and has been rejected by the real world and so the reason she likes working in the convenience store is because everything is timed perfectly everything is in order you can't really make a mistake you show up at this time you stack these shelves you have to do this by a certain time and everything runs smoothly if you're very regimented in the things that you're doing i have personally worked in retail and I 100% got that about even when you're away from where you're working whatever time of the day it is you can probably say oh they'll probably be doing this at that time because it's such predictable work working in certain shops is very predictable like orders come in at a certain time people clock on clock off they're the same shifts every week and everything is very predictable so I thought it was a book about a woman who had acted very oddly in her childhood and been rejected because of that and so she wanted some kind of structure so she couldn't 
make any more mistakes from that. There is a man who starts working at the convenience store. It's not a love story, but I loved their weird, weird interactions. I thought this was hilarious, this book, but I don't know how I feel about the overall message. I think if you've read it, you'll know what I mean. I don't agree with the overall message. I don't agree that some people should just work in jobs that keep them very regimented and very um, I don't know the word, like very structured, very regimented because I felt like she was regimented out of kind of fear of doing something wrong, out of fear of being seen as abnormal but by doing, just working at a convenience store everyone thinks she is acting abnormal, they don't understand why she doesn't want a proper job and get married and have children and I do agree with the thing that once you hit one milestone people want you to hit the next milestone so when people get engaged it's like when you're getting married and when they get married it's like when you're having a child and when you have your first child it's like when you're having your second child it's like this pressure within life. I thought there were so many great points, I really really enjoyed this book, I really I thought it was fabulous. I'd love to talk to someone else who has read this book and see their opinions on it as well, but I really loved this. So now we're gonna get into the books that I chose for my December book club. I chose A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I'm not gonna read out your reviews on this one because everyone enjoyed it and it's such a short read. And we're way past Christmas now, but I enjoyed it. It's a short read, I've read it before. I think it's a great book. It was just a fun book to read for the book club. So now the other book that I chose was a Jane Austen. This is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. This was first published in 1811 and it wasn't published under the name Jane Austen. It was published by a lady. That's what it said at the author bit, which I thought was just interesting. So I'm not going to give you any spoilers. It's about three sisters who live with their mother. They live in a big house. Their father dies and the house goes to their stepbrother. So he's their brother because they have the same dad, but they have different mums. So their stepbrother inherits the house because he's a boy. He gets the inheritance and he decides that he would like to move into the house with his wife and child. So then he tries to move into the house with his wife and child and kind of makes it a bit unpleasant for the mother and the girls because his wife doesn't really want them to be there and he doesn't really want them to be there. So the mother takes her three daughters and decides that they just have to move out of this house. And it's really sad because they've all grown up in the house and obviously the mother has lived there with the father who's just died and they're just kind of shoved out the house. So they then have to start what I would describe as a whole new life. They get a much smaller house, they're in a small community and they have to really kind of settle into this community and everyone's really nice and they make friends, well not everyone, but like they make friends with people and people are friendly and welcoming to them and then of course it is Jane Austen so we have three girls and it's romance and who is the suitors going to be and drama, a lot of drama, a lot of twists that I didn't expect to do with the boys to do with the suitors within it. The, my main thing that I loved about this book though I have to say isn't the romance, it wasn't the suitors, it wasn't even the suitors drama, it was the three girls relationship, the three sisters interactions with each other I loved. I thought they were so witty, so funny, I loved it when they kind of put each other down and they like really were kind of a bit cruel to one another at parts. I loved their interactions, I thought they were great. It's obviously called Sense and Sensibility because one of the sisters is very sensible, she's the sense, and the other sister is a complete drama queen who is over the top about everything, who is led by her heart not her head, who doesn't think rationally at all. So it's about those two conflicting sides but they both kind of, they don't become each other in any kind of way but I feel like they learn from each other a bit more so one of them softens and one of them learns to use her head a bit more within it. I enjoyed this, I thought this was good. I'm not however gonna read it again, I'm not gonna watch any adaptations of it, I don't feel that I want to at all, but I did enjoy it. I still prefer Persuasion by Jane Austen, that's the only other Jane Austen that I've read, and I do prefer Persuasion. But I thought, I thought this was okay, it was a good book. I don't think every book that you read you have to love, you have to want to watch adaptations and adore and it's going to stay with you. I think some books can just be entertainment and this was entertaining to me while I was reading it. At times it got a bit, it was just going on a bit because I was craving the sisters interaction more than I was to do with their romantic partners but then there were moments of drama that I wasn't expecting that were quite scandalous that really helped 
held my attention back to the story. So overall I would say this was a good book, I did enjoy it. I am now going to read out your reviews and why we have some mixed reviews. Let me just say a little bit of a alert, a warning, there were mixed reviews whether people liked this book or didn't like this book, so I'm going to read out your reviews. First review is from Buckley's Boots. I love Sense. The interplay between the Dashwood sisters and their two approaches to life is revealing about the conflicting internal elements of human nature. Colonel Brandon is my favourite Austin character. I'm really glad you enjoyed it and I agree it is about like should you use your head or should you use your heart and how that is very conflicting within the story. Next up we have a comment from Lud Gather. This is, I read Sense and Sensibility for the first time earlier this year. I liked it because, well, it's Jane Austen, but it's not my favourite. However, I reread it for your book club and enjoyed it immensely. I love the relationship between the sisters and most especially how the characters of Mar Marianne, who really annoyed me the first time I read it, evolved. If I had to choose a favourite character, it would probably be Eleanor or Colonel Brandon. Thank you for choosing this book. I'm glad you enjoyed it and I'm glad also you enjoyed it more, you enjoyed Marianne more on the second time round because Marianne is a complete drama queen and she just moans and whines about things and she, she loves drama, she loves causing a scene. So it can be a little bit grating but on the second reading when you know what's going to happen I feel like you can feel for her a little bit more. My next comment is from Andrea Wolfe, 1984. This was the first novel by Jane Austen I've read, but I knew the story from the 1995 film version. I was positively surprised by the writing style, and of course there was wit and humour that's typical for Austen, I guess. However, the story itself was not so interesting. The women wonder about the best marriage they can get and what they should read, paint and sing. I guess for the original audience, that was depicting their life. But for me, I couldn't help but feel bored in between. So the strong and witty dialogues couldn't make up for the lack of plot for me. But I am open to reading another another Austin if I want a more quiet read. Thank you for your comment. I get what you're saying, kind of it just wasn't a book for you and that there was stuff that was kind of very mundane in it and detail but I quite like like a lot of detail within a book but thank you very much for your review. And then the last review is from Honeysuckle Lane Books. I just finished reading Sense and Sensibility for the Tay Book Club and I loved it just as much as I always do. Even though I've read it many times, the book always feels a little surprising to me because I watch the 1995 movie much more often than I read the book. On the reread, I was particularly intrigued by some of the side characters. It was the first time that I picked up on Lucy's poor grammar or the fact that she was illiterate. It gave me a more respect for the character and made me wonder why no one bothered to teach the poor girl to read instead of just sitting around and complaining about how ignorant she was. I was also fascinated by John and Fanny Dashwood's relationship. They are both horrible people, but they are also a very good match for each other with a shared value system and worldview. I think they might actually end up having a happy life together in their own shallow way. Thank you very much for your comment. And I do agree that their brother and his wife, they are the perfect match for each other because I think some people could read the book and kind of think his wife's manipulative and his wife's the harsh one that wants to get the sisters and their mother out of the house. But I thought it was him as well. He could have stopped it. He could have said something, but he just, he didn't care. So I do feel those two are meant to be together in the end. Thank you so much for sending in your reviews. I'm always so happy when people read along with the book club and kind of shocked that people want to read a book along with me. It's always great. So thank you so much. Going forward in 2020, I'm not going to be doing a book club pick every month. Just when I find a book that I think is going to be great for us all to read together and we can have a real great discussion with it, that's when I'm going to announce books that we can read for the book club. Thank you so much for sticking with me in 2020. Thank you for all the feed up, feedback on my new style of videos that I'm doing. I hope you like these style of videos going forward and thank you so much for watching this video. Feel free to subscribe, like, comment, tell me if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books or if there's any of these books that are similar to the books that I've spoken about that you think 
that's, there's a book I know that's similar to that that you might like as well. I've had a fantastic reading month because I've actually enjoyed everything that I have read so far so I'm really happy about that. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon for another video.